Total Health Guidance uh, Total Health Talk for February um, 2019. This talk is going to be on uh, heart health and we're excited. Um, we're going to do some quick introductions and tell you who's here. I know we got some people here in the audience and then people, those of you joining us on Facebook or maybe watching this uh, later on on YouTube. So uh, let's do introductions. Uh, Tony? Hi, I'm Tony Ambush. I am the massage therapist here, health coach and manager. Um, my name is Coven Montemayor. I'm the acupuncture physician here. And I'm Dr. John Steitler, and I'm a doctor of naturopathic psychology. So the three of us together, we're going to be having an integrated conversation about what is heart health and some practical things that you can do to uh, prevent heart health, uh, or to, <laughs> to improve your heart health and prevent heart disease. Um, so what, when you think of heart health, um, we realize that it's the, it's the number one killer in our country. When you think about you know, uh, health, most people are most fearful of things like cancer or mm -hmm. other things. But actually, it's heart health that's the number one killer of both men and women in our country. Uh, and heart health is a, is a broad uh, category that really impacts all forms of cardiovascular disease. So when you think of heart health, uh, you might think of heart attack. Obviously, that's a heart health. That's the sudden stop of your heart. Um, uh, arrhythmia, that's the irregular beating of your heart, either too fast or too slow or sometimes ir irregular. Uh, we can think of... Uh, coronary artery disease, some, some disease in the, one of the major arteries of your heart. Uh, we also have a congestive heart failure where your heart's not pumping blood uh, as well. High blood pressure, another mm -hmm. one where, you, where the force of your blood is, is pumping too strongly against the artery walls. Those are just some of the uh, types of heart disease. But it's really critical, obviously we need our heart, so it's too critical that we, uh, we take care of our heart. We're going to be covering about 10 different things. It's not an exhaustive list by any means, but we're just going to be covering a handful of things, that, practical things that you can do to improve your heart health. Uh, so to kind of kick us off uh, and talk a little bit more in depth about how does acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine impact heart health, COVID. So I kind of wanted to kick start it um, because we talked about, I feel like the propensity when we talk about cardiovascular health is to talk solely about the anatom anatomical physiological aspects of the heart. But in Eastern medicine and philosophy, each organ is also associated with different emotions and different spiritual aspects. And so the heart isn't, we don't just view the heart as its organ, as its function. We also view it in other aspects. And when I first started learning about, you know, Chinese medicine, thinking that the complexion was associated with the heart, or that the tongue was associated with the heart, or that the heart was associated with fire or joy, just kind of seemed confusing. But the more you learn about how all those correlations work together, it's kind of impressive. And so um, the spiritual and emotional aspect to the heart is joy and, and the spirit. So in Chinese medicine, there's no separation between the spirit or someone's soul and the heart. And so when we talk about the heart in Chinese medicine, we're talking about the essence of a person as well. And so this is kind of a poetic, kind of artistic way of viewing the body. Um, but it's very interesting because we do a lot of um, facial diagnosis in Chinese medicine. And as counselors and a massage therapist who works with a lot of people like this, and I'm sure you guys at some point have used facial diagnosis. You might not have known you were using facial diagnosis, but I'm sure you've seen someone you love at some point and said, hey, what's going on? Is there something wrong? You diagnosed them because you saw something within their face or their complexion that was coming from their spirit, you know. And so that's kind of the correlation between like, oh, why can you see, can you see someone's spirit on their face? In in essence, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. um, you can see sadness, you can see joy, you can see all these things. Um, another interesting correlation is that joy is the associated emotion of the heart. And you know, joy doesn't. You don't really think of joy as a bad thing. You know, there's only positive joy, right? But the reality is joy in excess is mania, and joy in deficiency is depression. And so like, there needs to be a balance of all emotions, but especially the emotion of the heart being joy, it can't be in excess, it also can't be in deficiency. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we don't see the right, the right balance of everything. And um, in Chinese medicine, the heart is referred to as the emperor of the body, which is kind of cool because um, if your heart doesn't work, this is in all uh, types of medicine, your body doesn't work. You know, this is um, a pretty automatic correlation there. Um, but the heart governs every process of the body just as much as the spirit governs every process of the body and how they are both really tied together um, strongly. So that's just a little bit about kind of how we view the heart and some of the poetic, artistic sides of it. 
But acupuncture has a really amazing role in heart health. One, I'd say because um, heart health is just a general prevention for overall health. You know, having a healthy heart makes sure your whole system is working well. Um, but then also, there's been a lot of studies done on the heart rate variability um, and how acupuncture can help modulate um, that system. So that system is run off of the autonomic nervous system, which I know Tony's going to talk about a little bit more. Um, but acupuncture has been shown to help regulate the um, sympathetic and parasympathetic aspects of the autonomic nervous system. And a study done in 2001 by UCLA, they had um, several people who had heart failure who were on the waiting list for um, heart transplants. They did a study um, to check uh, different aspects of how acupuncture could help. And it was amazing how much acupuncture, it didn't change the blood pressure in those patients, but it did change the um, autonomic system. So it helped them to relax more, especially when they were um, tested with anxiety tests and stuff like that. So it was very interesting. Um, but so there's those benefits to just kind of overall heart health. Um, and yeah, and I'll probably touch a little bit on other specific kind of conditions a little bit later, but. Excellent. So Obviously, acupuncture is, can be one practical thing that we can do for heart health to re reduce stress and things like that. I'm going to touch on just a couple other uh, things that we think of. Uh, again, not an exhaustive list. There's all tons of things we could talk. We could probably talk for hours on things that you can do for heart health. But one, uh, when you think of, of heart health, uh, one of the things we think about is, is fat, right? The, the fats. And so I want to talk about giving ourselves an oil change. <laughs> when you think about you know fats or oils, right? Uh, and some of them think, oh, fats are bad. Well, no, fats aren't bad. Fats are, are good. There's good fat, and there's bad fat, and there's really bad fat. Okay, so we're going to talk about giving ourselves an oil change and kind of upgrading the oil like we do in our car. We need to change our oil and, and put good quality oil in our car for it to function well. But we also need to put good quality oil and fats mm -hmm. in our body. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the good fats that I mentioned. When you think of good fats, anybody, you have an idea of what, what would be an example of a good fat, like a food that has a good fat? Anybody? Avocados. Avocados. Okay, avocados. Great fat. Avocados, yeah. nuts, seeds, you know, salmon, you know, f the fatty fish. So there's lots of good fats. We need good fats. Our brain is mostly fat. We need fat for our, all of our endocrine or hormone system. Um, so we need good fats. When you think of bad fats, there are things like, you know, not so much that they're bad, but we tend to eat too much of them. It's the animal fats, it's the butter, it's the bacon, it's the, you know, fried things, it's the, it's the dairy. It's, it's not that we should never have it, but it's just we tend to not eat enough of the good fats and maybe too many of the, the bad fats. The really bad fats are something called trans fats. And trans fats are fats that stay solid at room temperature. Okay. Think of think of Crisco. If you open up a tub of Crisco, you can scoop it out. If you put Crisco in the woods and came back 10 years later, it would look exactly the same. It doesn't go bad. Animals don't eat it. Even mold and mildew have enough common sense to <laughs> stay away from it. Um, so I went to um, some fast food restaurants. Um, I won't name them, but uh, this is one, and uh, this is another one here. Um, but uh, And I have a cheeseburger from another one. Um, these These... They've never been shellacked. I bought them and I put them in my drawer. I got these these French fries here. They look like I bought them an hour ago. They're they're normal, um, but there's no mold and mildew. Um, I bought these on August fifteenth of two thousand and five. Okay, these are what, almost fourteen years old. Um, and the cheeseburger, the bun has no mold on it. The meat doesn't smell bad. It looks exactly the same. I got a, a donut in here. These these hash browns from another restaurant. Uh, that's because what trans fat does to your arteries, these things, the only difference is they're hard as a rock. You can, you can use these as hammers because uh, that's, what, that's what trans fat does to your arteries. It hardens your arteries. A study in the American College of Cardiology um, determined that 70% of 12-year-olds, think of 12-year-olds, have the beginning stages of hardening of the arteries. That's heart disease. When you think of heart disease, normally you think of people in their 70s, 80s, you right. know. Uh, but we're saying 12-year-olds have hardening of the arteries. Um, so that's a, that's a scary thing. Um, so one of the things we, one of the practical things you can do is reduce or eliminate 
your trans fats. Trans fats on an ingredient label, it's going to be listed as hydrogenated oil. Uh, we're going to have a handout for those in the audience and we'll po post it online for those watching us on Facebook. Um, but hydrogenated oils, um, that's what it'll say on the ingredient list. Whether it's partially hydrogenated, hydrogenated, doesn't matter, it's a trans fat. It's found in a lot of breads, fast food things, regular peanut butters, um, things like that. Doctors at Harvard and Yale have said there's no safe level of trans fat for human consumption. Uh, the countries where the government pays for health care, they've all outlawed trans fats. Uh, so this is, for me, this is a little black and white issue. Like, I'm, if it's up to me, I'm not going to put hydrogenated oils. If it's, if it's, food should go bad, right? So if it doesn't mold or sprout, throw it out. <laughs> this is a good rule of thumb. Uh, so one of the practical things, along with acupuncture, is eliminating trans fats. Um, that's giving yourself that oil change. Another practical suggestion is with good nutrition. Um, so we know that we want our arteries flowing, we, we want them wide open, right? So the blood flows, we don't want constriction and, and dilation of our arteries so the blood flows smoothly and clearly. Um, we need antioxidants in order for that to happen. Antioxidants, you know, reduce the inflammation and antioxidants are found in plant-based food. It's the only place they're found. It's found in fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, avocados, things like that. So uh, the increase in plant-based food, the increase of our fruits and vegetables is another way to help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, uh, heart disease. So uh, anybody have an idea of how many servings of fruits and vegetables the government recommends that we eat now? Any, any thoughts? A lot. <laughs> they, they, you know, all, all Americans, if you went to mypyramid.gov, all American adults are somewhere in the 7 to 13 servings a day. That's what the recommendation is. 7 to 13 servings. I don't know about you, but I don't get 7 to 13 servings. That's based on whether you're a male or a female and how much you exercise. As a male my age that exercises the way I do, I'm supposed to get 11 servings a day. Okay. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. But I don't get 11 servings a day. So I eat as many as I can to try to, to reduce the risk. The good news is if you eat your recommended servings of fruits and vegetables, you reduce your risk of heart disease by over 50%. You reduce your risk of cancer, stroke, diabetes. You reduce your risk of dying from a lot of different things by, by more than 50% if you eat your recommended servings of fruits and vegetables. The downside is the recommended servings is a lot. Um, so. Anything you can do to eat more fruits and vegetables. One of the things I encourage is every time you eat, if you're eating breakfast, a morning snack, lunch, an afternoon dinner, if you're eating three, four, five times a day, make sure you have a fruit or vegetable every time you eat. So rather than taking away or dieting or restricting, think about adding. If you're going to have cereal for breakfast, have, have some blueberries on it or have, have a banana with it. If you're going to have a slice of pizza for lunch, have a side salad or have some carrot sticks. Or, you know, um, so add a fruit or vegetable every time you're eating. A lot of times people, they know they're not getting enough fruits and vegetables, so they look to supplementation. They think, oh, I'll take a multivitamin um, to make up for it. And while we don't knock vitamins or supplements, there's just no regulation of the supplement industry. Uh, and very few of them out of the over 500,000 nutritional products on the market, there's only a handful that have real clinical double-blind placebo controlled, you know, gold standard research, published research on them. One of the ones, the only supplement, I don't take any drugs, I don't take any supplements, the only nutritional product I take uh, is something called Juice Plus. And it is by far the most researched nutritional product in all of history. There's more uh, independent gold, so you can go to PubMed and read more published research on Juice Plus. This is what it looks like up here. Uh, this is the fruits and vegetables. Uh, it looks like, if you look at the ingredient list, as opposed to seeing alpha tocopherol mm -hmm. and beta carotene and ascorbic acid, this is going to say carrots, parsley, spinach, kale, beets, you know, apples, oranges, papaya. It's fruits and vegetables that have been picked, vine ripened, juiced, dehydrated, and put into a capsule or into a, a little gummy bear. Um, it's a way to get more fruits and vegetables into your diet. One of the studies on Juice Plus I want to highlight specifically because of cardiovascular disease, this was published in the American College of Cardiology. This is the leading cardiology journal that all, all um, cardiologists get in our country. And one of the things it showed compared to the placebo group, they had a placebo group, a group taking Juice Plus, and then a group taking Juice Plus with their vineyard. This is your grapes and berries. 
what they found is after just four weeks, uh, all, all the groups went out to a fast food restaurant, had a high fat meal, and they measured the constriction in the brachial artery. Uh, the placebo group, uh, the juice plus group, and the, the juice plus with the vineyard group, at the beginning, they did it on day one before they started anything, they all had about, a, after eating the high fat meal, had about a 45% constriction. And any more than that, you have a heart attack. I mean, this is, that's, that's significant, that's heart disease after a really high fat meal. After four weeks of taking the placebo, juice plus, or the vineyard, they went back out to the same fast food meal, all the same meal again, went back to the lab. And the placebo group, as you would expect, had the same approximately 40% constriction in their arteries. The juice plus group had 60% less constriction. And the group taking juice plus in the vineyard had 94% less constriction, basically trace amounts. Of it. So what they discovered is, okay, not that it's okay to eat a bunch of fast food, but we all tend to have high fat meals occasionally. So this is a way to protect our arteries by taking, by getting all that plant-based nutrition when we do have high fat meals, it protects our arteries. There's lots of other benefits of juice plus, but that's one of the ones I wanted to mention. So again, not an exhaustive list, but we'll touch on a couple more. Tony, talk to us more about stress. Obviously, that's a big component of, of cardiovascular health and how massage can help. Yeah, so I'm going to just talk a little bit about, I'm just kind of defining stress in two ways. There's stress that everybody thinks of. It um, can be either mental or physical or both. So a basic definition of, of stress is a state of mental or emotional strain um, or tension resulting from adverse or demanding um, situations on the body. Um, and we know we can be stressed mentally or physically. So a more the definition that's more focused on the physical is that stress is the body's reaction to harmful situations. So these are whether real or perceived. You don't have to be under attack to feel like you're under attack. So it's even perceiving that a situation is threatening to you starts the body into the stress response, which is fight or flight. Now this is a normal response of our body to help us, to protect us, to shut down the areas we don't need so we can either stand and fight or get away. Kind of adrenaline, all these things we kind of know about. Again, I'm gonna stay really high level. Um, so if you can imagine what stress is, it's that continuous state long term or up and down all day. One moment, one day, the stressors of life just coming back, coming off, up and down, up and down. Because the fight or flight response is actually quite stressful on the body. You're basically dumping adrenaline into your system and kind of getting things, you know, to protect you, to keep you safe. And then, again, real or perceived, if you can't get out of that situation or throughout the day, there's different stressors from life, uh, life uh, work, relational, driving, anything, just practical stuff that can affect the body. So. Um, with long-term stress, you know, the hormones do impact um, the, the body and can have issues on many different of the body systems. Um, in some instances, as I would know, if you have prolonged stress, it actually can have a negative effect on the body and then can either exacerbate existing issues or create new ones. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much quick for me is just kind of making sure that we are aware of what stress is in the body. And as, as John said, we're going to talk about how we can alleviate stress. I know all of you have probably heard about massage. Um, I highly recommend it. There are so many different types of massage you can get. They don't have to be hour-long sessions. They can be quick 30-minute sessions. They can be aromatherapy. A lot of different ways to get what you need um, to help your body recover from these situations and also prepare for the situations. If you know you're going into um, a situation that you perceive to be threatening, you can do something relaxing for yourself. And again, we're going to have some more suggestions um, a little bit later. Um, so. Combating stress, of course, can be simple things like meditation, yoga, just mindfulness, being aware of your situation, like checking in with yourself in moments where you think, this might be a conflicting situation, this might be a little challenging for me. Deep breathing, some oxygen in the body, just try to relax yourself. Um, and all the things I think we're gonna dis discuss are not about hiding the fact that you're stressed. We all deal with stress. That is never, that type of Pretending we're not stressed and hiding our stress has more of an effect on our mental state than anything, I believe. So that's when we start to act out differently and act in ways we don't normally act because we're trying to hold on to, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, when we're really not. It's better to say, I'm not okay, and figure out a way to relax into the day. Like Things like that, like doing that, it seems really silly, but everybody in this room laughed when I did that. So it actually alleviates the tension and the stress physically emotionally I think we're all smiling and, and mentally so it's, are, do you guys feel a little more relaxed when I act silly so it's just another way to um, just have fun and really think about having fun and um, so my specialty is of course as I said is massage you know 
Um, and in my massage work, I also talk to people about their self-care plan and what they're doing. Like I ask people questions about what they're eating, you know, how their relational status is, how their spiritual status is, how their financial status is, because all of those things are the stressors that usually affect our lives. And they can change our mental health. Physically, they usually show up in the ways that we hold our bodies, you know, when we're driving, or, or and then we realize we're not driving, but we're still like this all day. So it's, you know, being aware and taking, taking a bit of a, um, accounts of your body, where you're at, where you feel the stress, where you feel the tension, and then calling it to relax. Just do something to help let go of that energy and let it through. Um, the other thing about stress, the last thing I'll say is this phrase, I, I've never liked this phrase, I still don't like it, get over it. No. <laughs> so the, really the only way, because that really just stops people. Because if, if people, <coughs> nobody wants to be in a state of stress, really, or dealing with, with issues, right? So telling someone to get over it, you're not really giving them the tool to get over it. You're saying get over it. What does that mean for someone? So we are more along the lines of let's get through it. How do I get through it? I get through it by acknowledging it, recognizing what it is, and taking action. Again, some of the things we'll mention, we've already mentioned, to help me get through it so that it's not still in me. Um, so that's pretty much what I have for that. Again, there's so many different types of massage. The best ones for relaxation, if you strictly want relaxation, are like Swedish massage, lymphatic massage, where it's just really relaxing. Every massage does not need to be a deep tissue if you're hurting because sometimes the pain in the muscles are because you're just physically stressed in the body the way the body's holding itself. So things like that, aromatherapy, these are really good relaxing massages. And I do one specifically called the Aroma Touch. It's eight different essential oils. And every person I've had on my table that gets that massage completely passes out. And that's what we want. Coven did use the more scientific terms, the autonomic system and all of that, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to shut down the body so that everything can get back into neutral. And the best way to do that and rest and repair the body is what? Relax. Sleep. Relax. Sleep. So it's just a constant, a deep state of relaxation. Those are, the, again, my key thing for massage in that instance for stress management is really do something very light and relaxing it's going to kind of coddle you a little bit make you feel really yummy and just make you, <laughs> make you pass out if you if you go to sleep during massage believe me the therapist will be will feel extremely appreciative it's it's a compliment for us um Coben, anything else you want to add for <clears throat> regarding acupuncture uh, or any other comments just as we wrap up here um i what struck me was your comment about breathing you know, like, of course, we all know breathing is good for you. When we're angry, you're supposed to take a minute and breathe. You know, if you're stressed, you're supposed to find this quiet space and breathe. But um, with, as it relates to heart health, and angina is like a pressure in your chest or a tightness. And it's caused by lack of oxygen to the heart muscle, okay, and heart cells. And, and so, you know, if you're having this and it's very intense, I'm not going to say, oh, you need to go find a dark space to breathe, you know. No, you should probably call 911 or take an aspirin to make sure you relieve that um, because that can be um, an onset of a heart attack. Um, but that being said, like, that reaction is a response to not having enough oxygen. And we all, at some level, need to breathe more, be more intentional about our breathing. It's easy to forget because we all breathe naturally. Um, but we don't breathe deeply naturally, unless we're sleeping, unless we have that moment of rest and refresh. Um, but we're only sleeping for, you know, maybe if we're, we're lucky, eight hours a day, most of us. Um, so you're getting that really deep, amazing, refreshing breath for maybe eight hours. That is if you have a good sleep cycle, if you're resting well and all that stuff. And so what that means is we have to integrate that into the rest of our day, especially the most stressful aspects of our day, which for a lot of us is work, you know, or commuting. <laughs> Just like Tony said, driving, you know. I know when I'm on certain stressful parts of the road, I'm not really breathing deeply. You know, it's probably the best time to be breathing deeply because I've got nothing to do in traffic. But, you know, you can be really integrating that. And it's helpful for your overall heart. Um, it's helpful for your overall muscles. You know, the heart is just a muscle. The arteries are muscles. They, they have different purposes than some of our other muscles, but they're still muscles. And just as much as our our muscles need to be worked and processed and oxygenated. Our heart all the more needs that. And mm. um, that's how it supports our overall health and well-being. 
Well, thank you. Uh, we're just going to wrap up here. I'm going to go through some uh, summary of some of the things and then open it up to questions. I know uh, Tony, by the way, Tony's not uh, working here. He's actually uh, <laughs> responding to people on Facebook and uh, sorry, <coughs> he's, not, he's not being uh, rude to people in the audience. Um, <clears throat> we, we've covered, again, not by any means an exhaustive list. Um, so I want to open up for a question. We, we uh, highlight the, uh, the 10 things that we kind of think of are a top 10 list of things we mentioned. Uh, we, we briefly mentioned yoga. Yoga is a way of, of relaxation, okay? There's lots of places where you can go to get yoga. Um, we're, we're actually starting some groups here. There's plenty of places around town that have uh, yoga. We're gonna be doing it kind of uh, using yoga with mindfulness and as an anxiety uh, treatment. Exercise, uh, we know that exercise is great for your cardiovascular health. You know, whether that's walking, swimming, bike riding, elliptical, uh, weights, the best exercise is the one that you'll do. <laughs> you know, so find the one that you'll do, whether that's going to the gym or you're socially motivated, you need to have a personal trainer, or you need to go to a running group with some guys, uh, but, but find an find a exercise that, that works for you. I mean, it's walking the dog, whatever. Uh, Tony did a great job talking about massage uh, and acupuncture. I'll just I'll uh, I'll give a shout out for both of them because um, uh, they won't do it. But uh, Total Health Guidance, we uh, we have won best in Orlando uh, for both acupuncture and massage for the last four years in a row. So uh, these guys really know what they're talking about. They they do a phenomenal job, and we're really uh, proud of that that accomplishment. Um, we talked about <clears throat> briefly about meditation and just meditating and slowing down that talks about the breathing. Um, there are so many opportunities to do that. There's great meditation apps that you can get on your phone um, that, and you can have spiritual or religious types of meditation, guided imageries, nature, all, all different types and lanes you can. Meditation doesn't have to be 30 minutes. So there's, they have two and three minute meditation applications that you can just oh, slow down and that can be, that can be really beneficial. Uh, I talked a little bit about uh, Juice Plus as a way of, you know, obviously getting more fruits and vegetables into your diet. <clears throat> Adding Juice Plus can be a very simple, it's a very cost-effective thing to do. It's free for kids, kids between the ages of 4 and 18, and full-time college students, no matter how old you are, um, actually can get Juice Plus for free as part of a family health study with a, an adult sponsor. So I, I buy my Juice Plus and I sponsor my son, he gets it for free. I just fill out a quick survey twice a year. Um, you know, gratitude. Tony referenced the whole, you know, getting getting through it, not just getting over it. Some of us have deeper things. We, we, we all have traumas in our life, right? Things that have happened to us in childhood, whether it's an acute trauma like abuse or abandonment, or just chronic trauma of having a, a, a not loving parent or a disapproving spouse or whatever. We, we've gone through chronic traumas. Uh, and getting through those things, it, you may need to, to talk to a life coach, a, a counselor, to help you through a process of dealing with grief or dealing with trauma. Uh, we do offer free 30-minute consultations here. If you have issues that you feel like, gosh, I keep thinking, you know, this keeps coming up in my mind, or I keep reacting a certain way, uh, that can really hinder your body's ability to have uh, uh, ideal heart health. Um, because that, that stress, that chronic stress of holding on to those things is going to be... Uh, just also, just speak a little bit to trauma, because I think when we talk about trauma, everyone always assumes it's really catastrophic. And my, my feeling of trauma may be very different and at a lower level than someone else's. Can you, so can you speak a little bit about trauma not always having to be okay. you know, really excessively violent or things like that? Yeah. Maybe a little bit to that. So obviously, you know, we think of the acute traumas, you know, physical or sexual abuse or sudden death of a loved one or something, um, and those are obviously traumatic events. But what makes something trauma, what makes something traumatic in our life is not so much what happened to us as much as it is about what we believe about ourselves as a result of what happened to us. So uh, you could get picked last on the kickball team. I use this as an example. These are things from my my job. You know, in third grade, and have somebody have some friends laugh at you. Uh, that can have a traumatic impact. If, as a result of that, I said, I'm never going to try anything else. I'm never going to go out of my way. I'm never going to be laughed at again. So, you know, I never I never take any risk in life. That has a traumatic reaction. That can be 40 years later, and you're still living in a in a trauma response. Uh, if something happened to you. And as a result, you came to the conclusion that I'm not worthy of love, or it's my fault, or 
you know, we, we have trauma bonds, we know, uh, there's lots of different ways that trauma uh, shows up, manifests itself in a person's body. We have a free uh, online trauma assessment that we can, or it's not online, but a free assessment that we can help you do to figure out which of the ways that trauma might be manifest in your lives. And we can give you some uh, resources and things that can help you uh, get through that. So thanks for bringing it up. Uh, I talked about giving yourself an oil change, reducing the, you know, eliminating the trans fats, uh, uh, and then getting the, the, the coaching. So out of all those things, and I'm sure there's many more, uh, what's one or two? And we're going to open it up for questions, but I'd also like to hear either from the people on Facebook or people live here in the audience. Is there one thing out of the things we mentioned that you would like to implement? Out of, you can't do all ten, right? So pick one or two or at the most three to start with. I, you know, I could add juice plus. I could get. I gotta come in and get acupuncture. Maybe I'll get a massage. Maybe I'll, I need to work my breathing. Uh, I'm gonna do a consult to figure out something that's going on in my life. But what's one thing that you might be interested in starting? Anybody in the audience want to share something, or anybody live on Facebook want to? Um... I really liked your suggestion of just adding a fruit or vegetable to every meal. Okay. I think that's something that I could start to implement right away. Great. And and that's that's simple. Increase. Adding a fruit or vegetable. Whatever you're eating, just think about adding. Yeah. I can always have an apple. I can have a handful of grapes. I can have some carrot sticks. I can have something. Okay, great idea. So that's um, really powerful. I just speak like that is that is the key. You know, I think a lot of people try to do, like they're going to try to do this whole list of 10. <laughs> and if it isn't your norm, it's going to be challenging, which is going to lead to, you're not, you might not accomplish it, which is going to lead to feelings of failure, so then most people quit. They don't do any of it. So doing one thing at a time, and once you get that cycle as part of your normal repetition, you do it all the time, you add another. That's, and our theory in all that we do, I think, is add more. So we don't, when we're doing our nutrition talks, John does his nutrition work, when we do health coaching, it's never about don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, because there is an emotional connection to what you're eating. I have this thing for McDonald's fries. I used to go every Friday with my mom after school when I was a kid. So it took years to break that comfort food need. Um, so it's really important to not deprive yourself. So if you add things, and the idea that if I add more fruits and vegetables, I won't have any room for all this stuff that I really don't need that isn't serving my body. So it's really important to think about one thing at a time, as you said, Kat, like picking the couple of things that will work for you. And the other thing, the things that will work for you are the things that you will do. If you're not going to do them, it's no sense in picking it. So that, that be uh, Any other co either comments from the audience here or questions? Any questions that we have or questions from Facebook? We got a question from the audience. Just one. When you were talking about trauma uh -huh. and how it, how you perceive yourself yeah. or you know whatever mode you get in, because it can set up a trigger. So if it happens and then you go back in that mode, yeah. How do you break that cycle? Mm -hmm. It's great. So the question is, should we have trauma and we, we have a trigger. We all, we all got buttons, right? We all got little buttons and, and some, sometimes they get pushed, right? Somebody hit, hits that button, ooh, that, that's a trauma reaction. Now, some of our buttons are so big that all you have to do is get within the zip code of, <laughs> of, you know, and boom, we have the reaction. So our goal is to shrink those buttons. So the question is, you know, what do you do to get over it or get through it? Um, and I don't have a simple answer. The, the answer would be I would encourage you to take the, the free trauma profile because there's eight primary ways that trauma manifests and depending on how it's manifesting. For some people will have physical reactions, some people will go to trauma bonding and they'll, they'll be bonded with unhealthy, manipulative, exploited people. Some people will, will uh, do trauma reenactment and they'll go through, you know, they'll go from one abusive relationship to another or they're looking for a different result. Uh, so there's different ways and there's different techniques for each of those eight. So if you take the free mm -hmm. trauma profile, then I can probably answer your question with okay. more well, I was just clarity. talking about like general, but because if you use food to, you know, like comfort food, yep. then you create yep. all these physical yep. issues. Yep. There's a couple... Uh, techniques that we do from a counseling standpoint. There's one called accelerated resolution therapy we do for people that have uh, physical symptoms, like the, they feel like, oh, every time I, I was talking to a, a person yesterday that uh, they were rear-ended, just a minor, five miles an hour, but now every time they're driving, they're, they're looking in the rearview mirror and they're having physical tension when they see a car come out. Um, and it's a very simple process. It's an eye movement type of therapy mm -hmm. that you maybe have heard, yeah. uh, but it helps put that memory or that experience, it helps it 
file appropriately into the right side of the brain because it's if it's not filed appropriately it's staying in a loop and we're constantly reenacting the same thing so that's one technique there's also a spiritual based technique called theophastic prayer um, and it's a way of, for those that have a higher power a, a, a personal relationship like with, a, with God or a higher power uh, we, we go back into the original memory and we we have rather than uh, the counselor or you or reading a book but we have your higher power speak truth to what was that corresponding lie the lie was I'm not good enough it's my fault whatever um, it's really powerful when God speaks the truth and then you have an experiential an experiential truth to replace whatever that experiential lie was so then we can come back out of it uh, so there's a various counseling techniques that we can do that that's just two common ones we use but there's others of repair needs sometimes that inner child didn't, we, we got in our growth, we got stunted because of trauma. Something may have happened to us as a child where socially or psychosexually or emotionally or whatever, we got stunted and we need to do some reparenting work of those inner children that still live within us and help them grow up. And, uh, do, you, do you find that more in um, families that go through divorce? I mean, like the children of families that go through divorce. Or is yeah, um, un unfortunately, trauma is pervasive, um, and almost all of us have had some traumas, right? Uh, <clears throat> so it's about whether we try to get over it or whether we've worked to get through it makes the difference. Um, mm -hmm. So families that have been through a divorce, kids that have, uh, we always encourage, even if it's the, a most amiable divorce and both parents are telling the kids, it's not your fault, it's mommy, daddy, we're having our issues, I would always recommend that child to come in to either, depending on the age of the child, to come in, meet with our play therapist or a, a counselor just to hear from a third person just to make sure there's no little seeds of I know but only if I was only better at school if I only hadn't if I had made my bed more often or because I can't tell you how many 40 50 60 year olds that were counseling now that when they were 12 their parents went through a divorce and they're holding on to these little seeds that just have grown and have now have trauma reactions. So it's always important to get, you may only do once or twice, or obviously if it's a more traumatic divorce, it may be more than that. Any questions from our online audience or anybody else here? Um, no real questions, we're just a bit kind of going, again, not ignoring you, but we've been going back and forth with a few questions about the essential oils and how they're, you know, how they can affect the body, and I was talking about internally, externally, um, and then also through scent. So I used lavender as an example, um, you can use lavender, obviously, everybody then knows it's, sort of, it's most commonly known for relaxation. If you take lavender internally, it's good for purification. And then if you actually apply it to the skin, for example, it's good to help with burns healing. Mm -hmm. So it's a hot oil, so you'd obviously want to mix it with a carrier oil. But there's three different ways that one essential oil can um, help the body, so we're talking about that. And then someone asked about the trauma profile, and I'll be posting it a little later. Um, so no real questions at the moment, just having some discussions about um, the benefits of um, some people are having some issues with heart issues and stints and restriction in their arteries and ALAs being helpful and omega oils being something they're taking. I've talked about how Juice Plus can help with that too. So just general yeah. conversation, no real questions at the moment. i um, just comment on the essential oils. Keep like when talk, Tony mentioned about you can take lavender oil internally. Make sure that it's a pure, we, we, we have a pure therapeutic grade uh, essential oil. The, the typical lavender oil you get at the, at the Walmart or something is probably gonna have a lot of chemicals in it, and that's not something you would want to take internally. So make sure it's a pure oil. And then the other mention the uh, essential oils. We hear about essential fatty acids. People take fish oils, things like that. Juice Plus does have an, a plant-based omega oil because the oil, uh, the most beneficial oil uh, for heart health and for is is a, the plant-based omega oils. Um, so the fish actually get the oil from the algae that they eat. So this is actually just the oil directly from the algae. So we cut out the middle fish and go right to the <laughs> right to the source of the uh, of the essential oils. Um, so great comments online. Uh, another question. question: When you were saying that kids can get Juice Plus for free, mm -hmm. how does that work, and how do you find out where you get that? Um, great question. So yes, yeah, so you can. Uh, if, for those online or uh, watching us or later or hearing us, if you want more information about how kids can get the Juice Plus for free or how you want to start Juice Plus, um, Tony actually is our wellness coordinator. Um, uh, all three of us are familiar with Juice Plus and we can help you answer any questions. Uh, for those here in the audience, we can actually give you an order form and give you all the information about how to sign up for the uh, family health study. Uh, 
Um, and then uh, if you watch us online, you can call our office, 321-332-6984, uh, and uh, ask Mr. Tony, and he can give you the information, or go to our website, too, where you can uh, get information about the Juice Plus. Okay. Um, I think that's all for today. We're going to end it here. Uh, we'll stick around for those in the audience to answer any questions. For those who watch us online, feel free to give us a call or email us at info at totalhealthguidance.com, and we'd be happy to get back uh, with you with answers to any of your questions. So thank you guys for participating. Um, great job, and we'll see you next month, Saturday, March 9th. Uh, that's the second Saturday of every month, Saturday, March 9th, at the same time, 10 a.m., live here as well as on live on Facebook for a discussion on autoimmune disorders. That's one of the fastest growing issues uh, that we're seeing. Uh, we're going to have a real lively discussion, I'm sure. So autoimmune disorders, that's things like lupus, fibromyalgia, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, issues like that. So you know anybody that has an uh, autoimmune disorder, be sure to tell them about our next Total Health Talk Saturday, March 9th at 10 a.m. Have a great week. Have a great week, Brian.